Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski. I am the adjunct professor for Rasmussen College and also the owner of Tutor for Finance and financehomeworkhelp.net. And what I've decided to do is to make a little video discussing preferred stocks. I can't tell you all how many times I get a student or uh, in my tutoring sessions get questions in reference to preferred stock prices. And from this, um, we're going to have a little video, and it's going to talk about the importance of preferred stocks, uh, what are the preferred stock uh, price formulas, then we're going to discuss the importance of understanding the different um, preferred price stock formulas, or just understanding why um, people need to understand preferred stocks. Once we're done with that, we're going to dive into some examples. I've got two examples lined up for y'all. I'm going to show you how to find the price of the preferred stock and also find the required rate of return for a preferred stock. And in solving these questions, we're going to solve them in both Excel and also we're going to solve them, um, you know, pencil and paper. All right, so further from this, let's go ahead and dive into what is a preferred stock. So preferred stock is a hybrid of both a stock and a bond. And a preferred stock is going to pay fixed dividends like a bond. So if you take out a bond um, in their indentures, it's going to talk about you're going to receive a fixed interest payment and you're going to receive it at a certain period of time for a certain length of time. The difference between a preferred stock and a bond is that, yes, you will receive the fixed dividends. However, you will not have a maturity date. So these fixed payments will go on and on and on and on. So your fixed payments are not going to stop, um, end with preferred stock. Also, with a preferred stock, that the board of directors can choose not to pay a dividend payment for preferred stock. So it can be skipped. However, with bonds, they can't be skipped. You're going to have the board of directors has to pay those bond payments, or uh, they can be forced into bankruptcy. The difference or the similarity with a preferred stock as compared to a stock is that neither a preferred stock or a common stock have a maturity date. So like I said, the preferred stock would go on and on and on just like a common stock. There, there's no end and both the preferred stock and the regular common stock are a claim on equity. A benefit for preferred stock over common stock is that in case of liquidation, preferred stockholders will get paid before the common stockholders. All right, and so the next thing, oh, I'm sorry. Let's see, here we got another, um, one more slide. All right, so the formulas we're going to talk about are going to be for, um, we're going to solve for the preferred stock price. And in doing this, it's going to be the fixed dividend payment divided by the required rate of return and that's going to give us our preferred stock price. Also, we're going to fix calculate the required rate of return. So if we got a fixed dividend payment and we know the price of the preferred stock, then we can calculate the, the required rate of return. So let's break these components down real quick. So the fixed dividend payment, that's the dividend payment that you're going, the fixed dividend payment you're going to get every quarter, every six months, or every year. The required rate of return, that's more of an investor's preference, and there, there's a lot of different calculations you can come up with to calculate the required rate of return or the expected rate of return. Um, but for this scenario, where it's going to be, um, you know, where they're going to calculate it, we're going to provide it. And the preferred stock price is just what the price should be selling for on the open market. And the beautiful thing of knowing um, when you do these calculations is that if a preferred stock on the open market is selling above or below our expected preferred stock price, then we know we're getting a good deal or we should invest in this particular stock price. And I'll explain that in just a couple of seconds, a little bit further. So for the two questions that we have here are going to be um, preferred stock questions. Uh, what is the preferred stock price if the dividend payment is five dollars and investors rate, rate required rate of return is seven percent so when i set this up in excel the first thing i'm always going to do is set up my preferred i'm going to do my labels because this is really going to be a template that you can use to solve numerous um, different uh, preferred stock homework questions 
So we got preferred stocks and so we'll adjust this a little bit here, make it yellow, make it pretty. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're looking at this question and it says, let's see here, what is the preferred stock price? So we're solving for the st um, stock price. So we know we're looking for the stock price, and but we also have our different components that we need to fill in. And so from over here, we're going to come up with what I call a data block. And this data block is what we're going to use to extrapolate important information from our questions. And I always start with a data block for the simple fact that is one of the hardest things students have or do is try to take the information from these questions and and solve the um, solve what they're trying to solve. And so this data block right here gives everybody a structure in which to extrapolate information and then to be able to solve the problem. So what we have here is we got our dividend payments. And then we also have the required rate of return. So the dividend payment they're telling us right here is $5. Oops. And then we've got the required rate of return of 7%. So once we have this, we can solve for our preferred stock price. And as shown in the equation, all we're going to do is we're going to divide the fixed dividend payment by the required rate of return. So for our template, we're going to press our equal sign. We're going to take our dividend payment, and we're going to divide that by our required rate of return. That's going to give us a stock price of 71.43. So if our required rate of return is 7%, and a stock is a preferred stock is currently selling for $75, well, we know that the, at our required rate of return, it's worth to us $71. So we need to decide whether if this is um, a good deal for us. And so since it's uh, selling for $75 right now, we know the price should be $71. So that's too much money. Um, so we would pass on buying this preferred stock. In contrast, if the preferred stock was selling for $70 on the open market, and we had a, a required rate of return of 7%, and so we would value the stock at $71.43. So from there, we would say, you know what, let's jump on this stock and let's purchase it because it's a good deal based on our required rate of return. So now for the second, and actually let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and work through this real quick on um, pencil and paper. So for the dividend, so we're looking for dividend payments of $5. So we know the dividend right here is going to be our $5. And then we're going to divide that by our required rate of return, which is 0 0.07. And from doing this, 5 divided by 0 0.07 is going to give us our $71.43. All right, so for our second problem, what we're going to do is we're going to keep the same information for our template here. And we're just going to copy and paste it just below. However, um, for the second problem, what we're doing here is we are looking for, well, the, the problem reads, uh, what is the required rate of return for a preferred stock if the dividend payment is $3 and the price of the preferred stock is $25? So what we're going to do is we're going to change around our um, labels real quick. So we've got a preferred stock, or we're looking for required rate of return. So we know we're looking for a required rate of return to the states right here. What is a required rate of return? Dividend payment's not going to change, but we're going to change this to preferred stock price. Once we get our labels changed, I always zero out, zero out um, the blue cells just so we know, we're, we know we're starting over again. And also, I also zero out the um, calculation button, the calculation area as well. 
So our dividend here is going to be $3, we know that. And the stock price is $25. We're gonna change that to uh, dollars instead of, all right. So now what we have here is we're taking our $3. So it tells us if the dividend payment is $3. So it tells us dividends so we're gonna put our dividend here. The price of the preferred stock is $25. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it right here. Next thing we're going to do is go back to our calculation for required rate of return. And it tells us that we're gonna take our fixed dividend and we are going to divide that by the um, price of the preferred stock. So we'll go right here and we'll take our dividend payment and divide that by the price of the preferred stock. And we are going to change this to percent. So this tells us our required rate of return needs to be 12%. So with that, um, let's go ahead and work it out um, pencil and paper. And all we're going to do here is we're going to take the $3 and we're going to divide that by the 25. And that's going to give us 0.12 and then we convert that to 12%. So if an investor has a 12% required rate of return, um, the stock price needs to be $25, or to flip this around, if the dividend payment is $3 and the preferred stock price is $25, then the required rate of return needs to be 12%. And we can use this you know, in real world by um, flipping this around and saying, if an investor has a required rate of return of at least 10%, should they buy uh, this stock? And based on this information, yes, they should, because this exceeds the investor's required rate of return. So that wraps up our little discussion on um, preferred stocks and um, how to calculate the required rate of return. And if y'all have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me at my website, which is, show y'all my website real quick. All right, so my website right here, you can get me at um, tutorforfinance.com or finance homework help. Again, my name is Paul Borowski, and hope y'all enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.